to go. And now, Ray, the question becomes, what happens with New York? Very disappointing. They loaded up at the deadline with veterans thinking they had a potential cup-winning team. Well, it was either going to work or it was going to fail spectacularly. And a first-round exit is option B. That right there is the moment when the New York Rangers got eliminated in seven games by the New Jersey Devils. After loading up at the deadline and being considered cup contenders, losing to their rivals was a bitter, bitter pill to swallow. But after completely revamping their coaching staff and bringing in some new faces, the Rangers find themselves right near the top of the league and seemingly are a problem for the rest of the NHL. Looking at the standings and the adjustments that this team has made, this Rangers team should terrify the NHL. But as we saw last year, everything changes in the playoffs. After a solid win against the top team in the league in the Boston Bruins, the New York Rangers are once again looking like cup contenders. Although they're not first in the league, the Rangers have the most regulation wins in the entire NHL. But will their style of play actually translate to playoff success or will we see another repeat of last season? The Rangers struggled to make adjustments against the Devils last year and their lack of offense when 5-on-5 five five ended up being their downfall. Out went Gallant, and in came Peter Laviolette. Laviolette's system has created a Ranger squad that wants to push the pace far more frequently and mirror other high-powered offenses in the NHL by having their D-man join the rush. The Rangers are better than most teams in two areas, generating offense off the rush and goaltending. To build a great team, you need great players who can properly execute within the right system. New head coach Peter Laviolette has done just that by getting the most out of the Rangers MVP and the breadman Artemi Panarin. He's got 97 points on the season and 41 goals for the first time in his career. With Laviolette giving the green light for his defenders to jump up in the play, he has given Panarin an extra option to create off the rush and in turn, it makes everyone around him better. Here, Rangers defender Braden Schneider wheels around the net to beat the F1 with his feet, and he's got centerman Mika Zbinejad there for low support. Realizing that the best option here is to just join the rush, he makes a great move to beat the F2 and advances the puck to his winger and Lafreniere. Knowing that Zbinejad, who's the center, is behind the play, and that Laviolette encourages his D to jump up, he acts as the impromptu center and chooses to fill the center's route. The jump in the play allows Schneider the opportunity to create offense off the rush with Panarin. He makes a decent pass, Panarin works his magic, and it ends up in the back of the net. A simple shift in paradigm and a green light to be more aggressive ultimately caters to the best players in Artemi Panarin. But Panarin isn't the only beneficiary from this either. Alexi Lafreniere was getting allegations of being a bust thrown at him early in his career, but being paired with Panarin has given him the confidence he needs to be a top-tier player. Playing further down in the lineup last year, Lafreniere was often sprinting into the zone as the F1 to retrieve a dumped-in puck. However, when playing with Panarin, he's almost always entering the zone with possession to create offense off the rush. When you play with Panarin, you trust he can make a strong play through the middle of the ice, and that's exactly what he does to get him the puck. This philosophy has opened up many opportunities for Lafreniere to be the trigger man. Once the Rangers get into the offensive zone, they're the best in the league at generating cross-slot passes. With goaltenders being so good in today's NHL, forcing the goalie to move laterally has become an easier method to score goals rather than trying to beat them straight on. The Rangers do that better than anyone else in the NHL with their motion offense. With more teams moving up high to find offense in today's NHL, Panarin's poise with the puck at the blue line is a skill that is highly coveted. This play here against Washington sees four Rangers near the blue line in the offensive zone. No one is in a dangerous area just yet, but look at all the movement. While Panarin brings this puck into the middle, both Miller and Zibinijad attack in the opposite direction. With the Capitals playing man-on-man, -man, the Rangers' one extra body up high creates the tiny difference and an extra bit of space. A simple chip play mixed with a give-and-go, and the Rangers create a dangerous pass into the slot, which ultimately ends up in a goal. With weapons like Adam Fox and Artemi Panarin, the Rangers get so many quality looks off the rush and in the offensive zone because the system allows them to flex their instincts and lean into their skill set. Now, all that is great, but will it translate in the playoffs? Because space off the rush generally tightens up 
and teams who struggle five on five typically have a short run as we saw last year. That may be a concern for Rangers fans as this year, they're still middle of the pack when it comes to five on five play, but they still rank in the top 10 in terms of goals allowed, shots on goal and on the PK. Their most recent game against Boston is an example of how this team needs to play if they want to avoid a repeat from last year. Mike Kelly had a banger of a breakdown of this on Twitter, but the Rangers completely stifled the Bruins off the rush in this game. This season, the Rangers are in the lower third in the league when it comes to how much offense they give up off the rush. It's a part of the trade-off for how great they are on the transition, but they jammed up Boston a big time on the blue line in this game, and it helped them come out with the W. The Bruins had a 53% success rate when gaining the zone 5-on-5 five five this season, but against the Rangers in this game, they were operating at 37.9%. Strong play in the neutral zone and aggressiveness at the blue line forced Boston to ice the puck and make turnovers. That only fueled the Rangers' rush attack even more. The key for the Rangers in the playoffs will be creating offense on the rush without trading chances of their own. In a recent game where they shut out the Hurricanes, they did just that. As the Rangers go to transition for offense, the defender Jones activates off the rush. A tip puck leads to a turnover, and this is where the Rangers can typically find themselves in trouble come playoff time. However, two strong routes back to the middle of the ice for both Roslovic and Jones counteract any possible threat. Knowing when and where to take their chances on the offensive side of the puck will be the determining factor in how successful they are defending in the playoffs. In the actual defensive zone, the Rangers do an incredible job of taking away the same cross slot passes that they do a great job at generating. Despite giving up chances on the rush, their aggressive approach in the defensive zone along the wall makes it incredibly hard for teams to set up and create a cross seam play. Anytime there's a bobbling puck or a 50-50 race, the Rangers are hyper aggressive to their check in order to kill the play. The less cross slot passes they give up, the easier life gets on their two studs in goal and Jonathan Quick and Igor Shosturkin. Both of these guys have been lights out this year for the Rangers. With the Rangers being among the best teams in the league at taking away cross ice passes, it allows for the play to stay more within the eyes of their goaltender. Shosturkin is a top five goalie in the NHL, and he's got the ability to bail out a team when there's a significant breakdown. However, the surprise has truly been Jonathan Quick. Most people thought that his best days were behind him, but he's done a fantastic job at giving the Rangers star goaltending when called upon. The Rangers certainly have a lot to prove when it comes to the playoffs. Whether or not their style of play can keep up with the other dogs in the East is a question that we're going to get answered very soon. When you look at the standings and all the weapons up and down the lineup, this team should terrify the NHL. But most people said the same thing last year when they loaded up at the deadline. For now, the Rangers remain one of the deadliest teams in the NHL, and they have the systems in place to do some damage when it matters. Whether or not that turns into reality remains to be seen.